Hey everybody, welcome back to another Destiny 2 fashion video. We're doing this one for Fashion Friday, the first Fashion Friday of the new season. We are completing our little series of top 20 transmogs with the Titan today. If you haven't seen the Hunter and the Warlock ones, be sure to check those out. Um, I think both those have held up pretty well with the new season, but I will say some of the new seasonal armor is really nice. And honestly, that Warlock chest piece and uh, maybe even some of that hunter armor could make it way its way into the top 20 for me i'm not sure yet i haven't made that decision but some really cool pieces with the new seasonal activity i haven't played with the uh titan that much yet so uh some of those pieces may sneak their way into this top 20 as well but we'll have to see it's kind of the nature of the beast with the new armor being added I haven't had much time to play around with it but uh, like the other ones, I kind of want to just hop in because these can get a little long. So uh, let's get into it. Number 20 is this Ancient Apocalypse plate. This is the old Gambit gear that just dropped randomly uh, when it first came out, I think. So this is not really obtainable now. This is a really cool chess piece and uh, it gives you some really nice tank vibes. Uh, it doesn't quite fit well with this set I put together here. I was rocking... Um, this retrograde chess piece um i think that fits in better with this set but that ancient apocalypse does a great job when you're looking for that bulky titan it just looks like a walking tank so that's made it into my top 20 just barely at number 20. for number 19 probably one of my favorite boots in the game with these braytex snow boots these are really cool so much detail and a really nice width to them wouldn't be surprised if these in actuality got transmogged a little earlier if I get a set that I like with them in it. These have such a nice aesthetic, really nice bulkiness, but super detailed as well. Uh, I really like these with like the Great Hunt set if you're looking for some interesting boots to pair with some of that armor. I think if you try these out, you'll really start to fall in love with them. These came from Mars, so sadly you can't get these either right now. But uh, really nice boots for number 19. For number 18, we're uh, seeing a little bit of a pattern with the last two videos. It's the Lost Pacific Helm. Really like this astronaut look these uh, Titan armor helmets do for these classes. And, you know, Titan's no different. Super unique look, so it does kind of get down in the later in the list for me personally. But if you're really into this astronaut look, I mean... Yeah, transmog this guy quick. Super cool helmet, really nice aesthetic that does well with the Dreambane armor from the moon and pretty much any other pretty slim looks that you want to go for. Number 17 comes in with a, another chess piece, the Christo Cream Plate. I just love this uh, back strap. It gives you a lot of horizontality around your shoulders. So you can go with a uh, slimmer shoulder even with a bulkier set, kind of like this one I've got here to get I uh, put together here really quick for you guys. And I do really like the front details um, and that giant collar really opens up a lot of room for some of the uh, maybe a little bit harder to work with helmets in the game. Maybe the uh, Shadows Mine, which just have a really long neck if you didn't know or don't have this helmet, uh, can make it a little hard to work with and that's exactly why it's not, well, no spoilers. But uh, I farmed a lot for this helmet and a little hard to work with, but I think this chest piece does a good job matching that long neck, honestly. Up next, we're rocking a old raid legendary leg piece, the Boltsmith's Iron Greaves. These came from Scourge of the Past, and sadly, he obviously can't do that raid anymore. We are getting some of that old um, forge armor dropping randomly, so be on the lookout for that if you don't have it but these are gonna be unavailable. I really love the pistons on the side of these. Add some interesting details while also keeping it a pretty slim leg in general. So uh, nice little dynamic to it, honestly. If you're going for high detail, skinny-ish look, maybe medium um, width silhouette, I think these do a really good job with that. And uh, I find myself working these into a lot of sets in the past, so excited to get these in the old universal ornament vault up next we've got a little piece of trials armor that hopefully will be a little easier for people to obtain soon 
I don't know about you guys, but the lack of Charles armor and the low tier wins is a little annoying, but we saw a similar thing when the first batch of armor released actually. So just have to be patient here, um, but it is the chest plate. Really big fan of this chest plate. Super detailed, a lot of cool shader zones in it. The profile is really nice. This jutting edge and these spikes near the top of the chest and a lot of cool details in the back. Uh, obviously that gets overlooked a lot, but really cool. Um, love the Warlord vibes it brings. And uh, I've used it a good bit since obtaining it. Um, if you see this at a low win or a win that you think you can get to, definitely go for it. Get it in the uh, Universal Ornament Vault, in my opinion. Up next, we've got a helmet with a lot of character. Very unique look with that, almost like a face. Uh, it reminds me of the Internal Warrior, actually, but shaders a lot better and I guess, quite frankly, isn't very ugly. Uh, it's the Prodigal Helm. Once again, I don't think you can get this this season, but I would expect this armor to rotate back through soon, if not very soon. Really cool armor set in general. Highly recommend checking out the whole set if you uh, like this, the aesthetic of this helmet. But yeah, this helmet just looks really nice with a lot of uh, thin Titan sets, which I like. I think I gravitate towards a good bit actually but are kind of hard to put together. 13 is another helmet that I actually haven't used too much, but when going through all the armor, I really enjoyed the aesthetic of it, and uh, I'm excited to use it a lot more in my sets. It's the Devastation Complex helmet. It does shader really well. You get that glow that changes in the slants and that middle vertical line in the front of the helmet. Uh, super simple. Uh, geometry in general actually and shaders everywhere except this silver part but it's on the side and pretty neutral color so not taking off too many points for such a super cool uh, helmet design honestly a helmet that I think we will see a lot in the coming days makes it into the 12th spot the Christo Cream helm got a lot of popularity with um, the uh, drop of beyond light I think Sweat Sickle really uh, gravitated towards this helmet and grinded out a good roll for it a lot before Transmog was announced, obviously. Shaders really well. Um, that visor changes color with the uh, shaders a little subtly. There's a few that do a really cool job of switching it up. I think a lot of people could see themselves Transmog in this one early just because it's such a unique look. I will say it is a very small helmet. I paired it with a super slim build, thrown in two different Lux pieces just to get it as tight and slim as possible. Uh, if you do too big of shoulders or too big of a chest piece, it really drowns this helmet out pretty hard. And that's why I've dropped it down so low into my rankings. It did make it in the top 20 though. Not all the armor pieces can say that. So shout out to the Christo Cream Helm at number 12. Number 11 is another helmet. A lot of helmets on Titan. Didn't really think about that when I was adding all this list together, but uh, they do pack a big punch in the uh, Titan fashion, I would say. And uh, nice figurehead to the top of your sets is very important. It's the Jimson Knight helm. Uh, I would say it shaders pretty well. That black visor doesn't go away at all, but you get that frame to uh, shade. That back portion actually does shade too. So things you can control, everything but that visor pretty much. This is a bit of a long neck of a uh, helmet, but as you can see, it's not too bad. Not, not as bad as that Shadow's helm. Really like this aesthetic. Um, I, I'm really interested in trying to put together a cool like Tron suit with this. Maybe some of the contender gear, like these gauntlets I have here. Pretty slim, so you could maybe do that, but Always looking for some more glow to go with that kind of aesthetic. Maybe I'll work on that for a future video. Top 10. We are finally reaching the top 10 of the countdown. Uh, let me know if you've been su surprised already by any of these, or if you think you maybe you're a little surprised I haven't said some yet. You know, I guess you should wait till the uh, top 10 go through before that kind of reaction, but 
the top 10, we're gonna have one that I think surprises a few people. Maybe it'll help open your mind up to this set a little bit. But it's the Dream Bane Grease. I uh, fell in love with these a long time ago and made a couple sets with them. Uh, the nice thin uh, silhouette, but you do get a lot of detail that you can play off of with the other pieces of armor. These circular rings, and as you can see with these dawning warth, warmth shader, a lot of different shader zones packed into this tiny leg armor. I think it looks really nice, and uh, like I said before, Thin Titan is kind of my go-to, what I lean towards. So I uh, definitely could see myself transmogging this and using it a good bit. Next up is a helmet that I think everyone expected to make it on this list. It's kind of been the generic sweat helm for the past year and in d1 it was the generic sweat helm for i mean it felt like the entire time the game was out but it's the helm of the exile really nice silhouette super slim but also uh, a lot of depth to it got a, a lot of little interesting details you can play off with the other sets uh the other armor pieces and shaders super nicely I don't think there's a place on this that isn't affected by the shaders, including the back of the neck here, which is pretty subtle, but you know, can maybe be used by some of the uh, higher tier fashioneers in the community. Number eight is uh, one of the few marks we're going to see in my top 20 here. Tight marks, I feel like, are kind of like Warlock Bonds, where the best ones are kind of reserved in that Bright, du Bright Dust Shop Eververse store. Sadly, but uh, Wing Discipline actually adds a really unique vibe to the mark. Really tattered near the bottom here and really interesting texture while also giving that really cool Crucible uh, Phoenix logo on the back here. As you can see, doesn't shader super well, but luckily the uh, unshaderable part is black, so shouldn't be too much of a problem working that into most sets. Can change the color of that eagle, which is really nice, and can lead to some nice looks. Maybe I gave too much of a hint towards number seven being these beautiful prodigal gauntlets, but uh, man, this whole set is full of really good armor. They really did a good job with this. Super thin, super detailed, a lot of interesting shapes and geometry in the forearm and the shoulder while staying really accessible to a lot of different other armors. I think they did a good job with this one for sure. Shaders really well as well. Um, I see just this gray not changing, but that is hidden behind these giant fins from the front and the back anyway. So you really shouldn't have any problems making this set look really nice. The last piece of armor before the top five is actually another mark, the Jinsum Knight mark. Super unique look to this, and uh, I think its main claim to fame is this interaction with the Lux Parka here. Kind of makes it look like it is connected in a way, and gives you a really cool like duster long jacket look to the Titan, which is super unique, very warlocky. You. Uh, Maybe a warlock main looking to transmog your titan in a certain way. Maybe you're interested in this combo here. I really like this mark though, and I think it's pretty useful outside of this chess piece as well. Fits really nicely with this dream bane chess piece as well. See the textures really close to each other near the midsection and this mark. If you're looking for some other inspiration. Now entering the top five, we've got a helmet that, you know, I don't think I've successfully used in a set in a while since I've gotten it. I love the aesthetic though, and I'm hoping maybe Transmog really helps me figure out how to use it more uh, dynamically, I guess. It's the Moonfang X7 helm. You get this from the Prophecy Dungeon when you beat the final boss. Do you hate how slim it is? really eliminates a ton of chess pieces to work with it. I've got it paired here, just the Righteous Play from the Season of the Dawning, but you can see it pretty close to the max, even the uh, bulkiness you can go. And this is a pretty slim chess piece, so pretty difficult to work with, but man, is, is it just a really cool helmet? 
I would say uh, if you want ease of use, I think the Helm of the Exile is better here and kind of similar, but uniqueness and like potential, this helmet is pretty high up there. So that's why it's made its way up to my top five where I can maybe play with it a little bit more. Number four is a chess piece that I have loved on my hunter for a long time and I think it just works just as well on my titan here. It's that earth wildwood plate armor. The hunter has a similar kind of pouched uh, tactical look uh, across the front of the chest and I've done a lot of piece different sets with it and I think titan it just slims up the body really well but also keeps a lot of action a lot of Unique pieces you can play off of, a lot of little claps, these uh, little canisters, and the pouches. Shades really well as well. You get a lot of different colors popping through if you're like me and like to do a bunch of different shaders. Makes it a little easier when you have more colors to work with. The Wildwood Plate's actually obtainable now. There is the Anti-Extinction Plate as well, which... With the way the future war cults kind of getting revived this season, I would expect the other factions to get some similar love before the Witch Queen. So you may see this variant if you like that Dead Orbit logo here and uh, wanting a slightly different look. I mean, it's very similar. <laughs> Number three is a chess piece that I've been just dying to get my hands back on. It's uh, this Devastation Complex. The Sweat Lords and veterans of the game probably have that Crucible chess piece ornament. And uh, they've been flexing their awesome feathered neckline for, what is it, two years, three years now? And finally, it's time to, for the rest of us to join in the fun. Love, obviously, this giant bouquet of feathers coming out of your neck. It makes a lot of helmets look really nice and uh can help you accomplish some really cool bird aesthetics as well just a really cool look to this chest piece um you can do the crucible version the phoenix strife adds a lot more detail to the front shaders a little differently it adds in this unshaderable black piece here where this side does shader so it's kind of a trade-off you know do you want the uh, phoenix logo on the upper chest with the unshadable bit here or the cleaner look and uh i've kind of decided maybe the cleaner look is better for me personally but that black will definitely not hinder too many sets and the phoenix logo is pretty sick so definitely a toss up just depends on what you like between these two but i, I i've got the devastation complex in here for me personally Number two is a symptom of what I've said earlier. I love the slim titan look and these lost specific gauntlets are some of the best at accomplishing that. They give you some nice padding near the forearm and the shoulder so it doesn't look too naked like maybe some of the Lux arms or uh, similar arms like that and uh, give you a nice middle ground. You know, uh, you get Lux obviously when you want to go super slim you'll have these if you want to get this medium armor look kind of like i've got it going here and then obviously like literally every other armor in the game for that heavy armored look i think these will just round out my titan arms forever and uh really excited to transmog these and i think they've earned the number two spot in my opinion like the other videos i want to hit some honorable mentions really quick i think if you uh really like the like airplane aesthetic you can get this tangled web helm probably pair it with the phenotype plasticity and just go full wing build i think that would be pretty cool uh that is this helmet will probably land in my transmog list eventually just didn't quite make the top 20 for me speaking of another really interesting aesthetic you got this scatterhorn helm i think this one will be in uh the transmog list eventually didn't quite make it here as well though I think you could do some pretty cool like cyberpunk vibes with this but not the top 20 for me personally the Tora Bottle helmet really cool helmet very unique design 
shaders really well actually for what I would expect. Like the similar helmets for Warlock and Hunter, I feel like don't shader this well. I uh, have actually tried to use this in a lot of sets and it's kind of tough. I, I find myself not really able to match this aesthetic with the rest of the armor the Titan has at its disposal. So personally, I'm kind of holding off on this piece of armor. I could see some people going for this though, and I wouldn't blame you. Really cool looking helm. And if you get one look that matches this, then hey, that's your five synth weaves and you don't need to worry too much else. I think if you're looking for a blue, I think this masquerade helm's super clean. Really nice look to it. Uh, shader super well, two-tone always, and uh, I think it could fit in a lot of aerodynamic looking sets. I think the Dream Bane helm versus the Lost Pacific helm, kind of a toss up to what you like. I don't like these unshaderable tusk here. That's why I went with the yeah, more classic astronaut look with the uh, Lost Pacific helm in my top 20, but if you're into this aesthetic a little bit more, just go for this one. I do think these iron tubage uh, arms d are deserving of a call out as well. Sadly, they don't shader very well, but this giant wolf heads are super sick. So hard to blame anyone if they uh, like this color gold and really like wolves. This is definitely some sick arms you should grab. For a super unique look, this Scatterhorn chest plate does a really cool job. You get these giant tubes that actually shader pretty well going across the neck and around the back. If you had a really specific aesthetic, maybe like a junkyard vibe or something similar to like that, I think this could be a really cool piece for you. I personally find it a little hard to match these with the other stuff, but can't deny the uh, coolness factor of this. That whole Scatterhorn set on all three cat classes really deserves some shout out. You should definitely look through all that before making any big decisions with your synth weave, in my opinion. If you're really into that halo aesthetic, um, I think the snow boots will probably cover most of what I'm wanting to do, but there's a lot of different other armors that do a good job with that as well. You have the retrograde armor, as well as the uh, recent renditions of the uh, vendor armor, Cinder Pinion, the Calamity Rig, and the Phobos Warden. These all have the same silhouette with slightly different little textures to them. I think those are probably my favorite. Uh, very similar silhouettes to those, so uh, maybe just take a glance and think about if you want the decals of the uh, vendor armor. If not, then I definitely suggest the retrogrades for a little bit thinner silhouette though, um, but still a nice heavily armored look. And finally, for number one, it's a, another beautiful helmet that I'm really excited to get finally back to a usable state. The Midnight Exigent Helm does have an unshareable bit of green between these uh, kind of panels in the front, but it's such a unique and sharp angled helmet that goes well with a lot of the other pieces I've put together here for my top 20 and just a really unique and cool helmet. Also has a lot of cool details in the side of the helmet and just shaders really nicely overall, as you can see. Really unique helm that I think just captures really what I want my Titan to look like really well and uh, excited to transmog it. Let me know if any of these surprised you, I think that's my favorite part. Or let me know if I missed any that you think should have made the top 20. That uh, is also really fun to read those. And uh, I don't think anyone's wrong for having their own preferences. And I think it's fun to see uh, where we may be different. I hope this gives you uh, an idea of what you may transmog first. If you like this video, I'm going to be doing a lot more fashion videos on this very screen we're looking at here and maybe even with some of these armor pieces I've left on the Titan. I'm really excited to hop into this season full force and deliver you guys some amazing sets. Really feel like the shackles are off with this season's uh, 
new screen here and the new shader system comes with ease. If you uh, don't know my channel, I take pride in doing four to five unique shaders on every set that I put on YouTube just because I uh, hold myself to a higher standard and I think uh, that gives you guys a nice little idea of shader families as I like to call them and maybe help more people join in on the fun that is mixing and matching the shaders. If you uh, like the sound of any of that, hit the subscribe button. But I hope you guys have a great day and I hope you keep enjoying that season of the Splicer content. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.